Okay, here's some key indicators. So when you see these things in your patients, think of SIBO. When a patient reports dramatic transient improvement in gastrointestinal symptoms after antibiotic treatment. Now, most of us in this room are probably naturopaths, so we're a bit skittish, or can be, with antibiotics. It's not our first choice. So this is, this is in here so that we don't put prejudices forward. If, if a patient says, well, the only time my, you know, my bloating or my diarrhea got better is when I was on antibiotics for you know, pneumonia or something like that, we should pay attention. That could indicate SIBO. When a patient reports worsening of their gastrointestinal symptoms from probiotics containing prebiotics. Now, probably the patient, depending, may not be sensitive enough to know that it's the prebiotic in the probiotic that's causing them the problem. Uh, so they'll just say probiotics make them worse. And sometimes probiotics, even without prebiotics, do make these patients worse. It's, that's a very um, controversial subject, the use of probiotics. And we're going to get to that at the end of the day. Make you wait all day long for that. But um, prebiotics, of course, are food for the bacteria. That's why they're in there. So if a person has an overgrowth of bacteria in their small intestine, you give them food for it, it's going to make symptoms worse. It's going to increase the overgrowth. When a patient reports fiber worsens their constipation or other GI symptoms. So this is, this is always a strange one. If you know, We're always taught constipa uh, constipation should be treated with fiber. And maybe this is another way in which we might have had a prejudice. Oh, that can't be right, you know. But it is. Um, for SIBO, it will make them so much worse. And the reason why is because soluble fiber, of course, there's two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. Soluble fiber is a prebiotic. We can't break or digest that apart. And uh, it feeds them, them being the bacteria. When a celiac patient reports insufficient improvement from a gluten-free diet. As we'll see, the diets that treat this condition remove more than gluten. And so if a person has, somebody can have both. They can have SIBO and celiac. These go together fairly frequently, actually. Uh, so if they went gluten-free, a lot of times what they substitute in for the gluten is starch which is a main food for the bacteria. So you know, you see the potato starch, the tapioca starch, all this in the baking for the gluten-free patients, and a lot of increase in fiber. And it can really not work out well. When a patient develops chronic GI symptoms after taking opiates, it turns out that opiates as we all know, slow the motility of the gastrointestinal tract, but they also slow the migrating motor complex. And when we don't have that functioning well, we don't have the bacteria being swept out of the small intestine, and overgrowth can occur. SSL has had a couple of patients that he identified for SIBO with this exact thing. They, had, they just reported, all my GI symptoms started after I was on a painkiller for blank, knee surgery, whatever. When a patient has chronic low ferritin with no other cause. This is pretty common. I see this a lot. And you can't figure out why. Um, in fact, sometimes when you really work it with patients on this and you're trying to chase down why do they have this tendency to anemia, and particularly low ferritin, I myself have gotten to the point where, I, before I knew about this, where I said, it's like something's stealing their iron. That's exactly what's happening. The bacteria is actually eating it. And here's one that uh, Dr. SSL has seen a few times, when the pancreas is obscured by a gas bubble on CT scan. I just added the slide in. You don't have it in your notes. Sorry about that. I had forgotten to add it into your uh, written notes. So yeah, he's had patients come in showing him their CT scans or just saying to him, you know what's weird? My GI doctor told me that they couldn't, they, there was a huge gas bubble. They couldn't see my pancreas. And that's because bacteria make gas. We're going to talk about this at great length later. Um, but they make gas, and they can make so much gas that you know, it can be seen as a big gas bubble. <laughs> 